You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. And welcome, Hoosier fans, to episode number three of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates, presented by Speakeasy Sales Copy. If you missed episode two, I highly recommend that you dig back a couple weeks in the Assembly Call archive to find it. Tamar and I were joined by Tamar's brother, Trey, and the two shared a number of entertaining stories from their high school days hooping together and bringing their school's first state championship home. There was also some trash talk directed toward the father, so we'll definitely be getting the elder Bates on here in a future episode to defend himself. This week, we're doing our first AMA, or Ask Me Anything, episode. This is where you get to ask uh, Tamar questions, or you tell me the questions you want, and then I ask Tamar, and we get his answers. I put out a call for questions in our private IU Sports discussion community, and Tamar is here to answer as many as we can get through. And by the way, if you haven't joined our community yet, you can go to assemblycall.com slash scoop, and that will get you the best current price on our community bundle, which includes Coach Adranya. IU film room content. And again, that URL is assemblycall.com slash scoop. And that way you can provide questions for future AMA episodes. Okay, let's get into it now. All right. Well, tomorrow, the first question is obvious. How are you feeling physically with the season just a few days away now? Um, I'm, I'm feeling good, honestly. Um, you know, I mean, I'm continuing to make sure I'm going in, getting treatment, taking care of my body. Um, you know, just making sure you, there, there's no slippage in terms of that, because, you know, that, that's the only way we'll be successful if everybody is ready to go, because, you know, we're, we're going to need everybody just to to win games and do what we want to do. So, you know, I'm doing my part, making sure that I'm taking care of my body as well as um, the rest of the team is. Nice. So you anticipate being ready to go for the Eastern Michigan game? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So what, you know, I'm curious with the scrimmage, you guys obviously had the scrimmage last weekend and it was secret. And so there weren't, you know, many details out there. Um, you know, we know that you didn't play in that scrimmage. Were you able to gain anything from the experience, even though you weren't able to get out there and actually play? I was. I mean, just being like um, around like a, I mean, a college game. I mean, just, and, and it was like being that was the first team that we have played. Like that's another college team. You know, yeah. it, was, it was a good experience for me, you know, just seeing like everything leading up to it. Obviously, like the, the scout, like the shoot around, like that was all the same as it was in the Bahamas. But, you know, I, I learned a lot. I, I saw a lot of things. Um, I, I watched the film continuously, even though I didn't play because I'm just like, you know. The same situations that my teammates are in, I'm going to be in the same. I'm going to see the same type of stuff. And so I, I just I, I learned a lot. I went, went in and watched the film with some of the other guys and the coaches. So. You know, the, the biggest thing that I took from that is that, you know, we, we got to guard to win. Yeah. We, we, we got to play defense. And that that's obviously, you know, what the coaches preach every day. And then we, we got to uh, lock in on the scout, make sure we know other players' tendencies. Now, did that lesson come from the fact that the defense was really good or that there was maybe some slippage in the defense? A little, a little bit of slippage. Like, it, it was, yeah. you know, it, obviously, like, being our, like, first – scrimmage after like practicing it, there's going to be some things that were really good, which there were, and there's some things that we can learn from. So that, that's all that is. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into some of these other questions here that community members have sent in. And let's go to the first one from Jeff. And Jeff says, as we get ready for the opener on Tuesday night, how are the coaches and the team approaching game prep in practice and film? Well, I mean, we, we watch film every day and, you know, um, Practice is always high intensity, high, uh, highly competitive. And, you know, we, we're we not changing anything in terms of that. But our focus is just all on Eastern Michigan and nobody after that. You know, we you know, we, we have a huge focus on taking everything at the one game at a time. And, you know, that that's what Coach Woodson is, you know, trying to make sure guys understand that and, you know, just continuing to you know stay patient, not trying to get ahead of ourselves too much. But, um you know, we'll, we'll start um, doing like the scout, like the scout team will start running their stuff today. So, um, yeah. we're, you know, we I, I think we're, we're doing it the right way. OK. And it's the right way. Um, and Rob wants to know, what role do you see yourself playing on the team this year? And do you feel that you are physically ready to handle Big Ten basketball? 
Well, start on the back end. I, I think I'm physically ready. I mean, I, I got the, you know, the little freshman 15 and, you know, Coach Cliff is definitely excited about that as I am because I, I is it the I good was, is it the good freshman 15 not like the yeah. freshman 15 that the rest of us get right yeah the good good freshman 15 the athlete freshman Solid. 15 <laughs> yeah. right, right. That, that that's something that I'm excited about just because you know I feel like I can you know do a little bit more things throw my weight around a little bit so you know that that's something that I was glad um you know I was able to do and um you know I, I feel like you know my role on the team is just to be a high energy guy, a leader on the floor, a coach on the floor, kind of relieve some pressure off a of coach and, you know, just somebody who plays both sides of the ball, you know, and, you know, it's, somebody going to go out there and play hard. You know, I, I really wouldn't say, you know, obviously, you know, coach needs me to be aggressive and score the ball, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to let the game come to me and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to try and do anything that I'm not used to doing. I'm going to go out there and, you know, do what, you know, got me here and, and a lot of the things that I've learned since I've been here. So, you know, I, I feel like I'll, the, the role that I do have, you know, I, I fit right into it and I'll, I'll um, flourish it. I flourish it. You know, I'm curious, you know, it's the preseason. So a lot of these lists start coming out and there's been a, a bunch of lists of like sleeper freshmen to watch, you know, so which kind of indicates, OK, here's a freshman who's maybe under the radar, not one of the headline guys, but you should pay attention to him. And your name comes up on a lot of those lists. What do you think about that? Do you care at all? Do you take that as a sign of disrespect that people are even thinking that you're a sleeper? Uh, you know, do you like seeing your name on those lists? What's your reaction? I mean, I, I don't look at them at all. Like in, in JD, our um, media like guy, he advised us like in a meeting that we had when we first got here, just like Instagram and all that is fine. But just to like stay away from Twitter just because of like the the comments and you know, just the things that are posted on there. Like, so I've like, I don't really look at any of the lists. I don't see it because in my mind, I'm like, no matter what they, where they see me preseason wise, we still have to play the game. Like right. we still have to go out and, you know, everybody has to see each other and they, and everybody has to see Indiana. So, you know, I, I don't really like take it as disrespect or any, anything. I mean, I, I would more so more so say motivation. Like if I do come across it, but I'm just like, you know, I'm I, I believe in my ability and my my um my goal isn't to go out there and prove anyone else wrong, it's to prove myself right. So, you know, I, I don't I don't really see it as anything um more than it is, it, which is just a list. Yeah. Somebody's opinion. Probably a healthy way to look at it, I would say, yeah. in the preseason. You know, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you're obviously a confident guy, and you have expectations for, you know, what you're going to do as a freshman. I'm curious just what your mindset is in terms of how patient you might have to be to get the role that you want. You know, and to use as an example, you know, Jaden Ivey at Purdue – uh, is a guy whose trajectory is interesting to me when I think about you. You know, he came in, didn't play a ton early on. And then, you know, by January, February, March, he's playing big minutes, you know, scoring double digit points. And now, you know, he's entered this season as everybody's, you know, all American, but it took him a while to get going. Right. How do you view, you know, what, how quickly you want your role to be established? Or, or, or do you even think about it in terms of that? Or like you said earlier, you're just taking it one game at a time. I'm, I'm definitely taking it a game at a time. And I feel like my role will just, you know, establish itself, you know, just with me learning and continuing to play more games because, you know, it's only so much that I know going into the season being a freshman. But, you know, obviously, like just having our coaching staff and the, the um, not, not like like the, the veterans that we have on our team, like we, we have a particularly older team this year. So yeah. I, I can learn a lot faster and, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, my role will come just with playing more games, really. Um, and, and it's not really something that I, I don't know. I mean, it's like, because, I mean, just, just the work that we all put in, like as a team and, and individually, I feel like everything will, you know, happen the way that we we want it to. And obviously, it's, it's going to be some ups and downs. It's going to be some, we're going to hit adversity. Like, we can't, you know, dodge that. But it's just all about how we respond and, you know, and just, how we approach the games and practice mentally just every day wanting to get better. So I feel like if we just continue to approach everything the right way, you know, everything can take care of itself. Makes sense. Um, Tony wants to know, since arriving on campus, what has solidified that Indiana is the right place for you? I mean, just, just being, just being in the gym and just being around like-minded individuals, you know, people that, 
think like me and, you know, have, you know, similar goals and, you know, similar goals for the team, similar goals for themselves is just like being around people that are all about team and, and together, togetherness and family, because that's what I come from. So like being that that's all I know and then coming here and just feeling comfortable because I'm around people that come from the same type of environments and, you know, Coach Wilson, he he's all about family. So, you know, him him leading that and knowing that he's the guy in charge and his core values match up with mine, you know, my experience, you know, so far has been everything that I thought it was going to be and more. As you may recall, Bob Knight famously said, all of us learn to write in the second grade. Most of us go on to do greater things. And Coach was right about some types of writing. But today, we're talking about copywriting, the kind of writing that drives sales and builds businesses. And as another famous IU figure, Mark Cuban, likes to point out, there is no sport as competitive as business, which means you need a killer copywriter on your side to find your edge, dominate the competition, and rack up wins. Clay Manley from Speakeasy Sales Copy is that guy. Clay's an IU alum, a diehard basketball fan, and an award-winning copywriter whose words have been trusted by Petco, Marvel, Slim Jim, and beyond. So if your business could benefit from more engagement, leads, and sales, then check out Clay's copywriting and coaching services at speakeasysalescopy.com. And if you want to learn how to whip up your own sales winning copy without breaking a sweat, Clay has a virtual copy coaching course that is tailor-made for you. As a listener of this show, you can sample Clay's proven playbook for sales winning strategies for free. Just go to speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop to get your free copy of his Right to Sell Secrets guide. Just how winning cures all in basketball, sales cures all in business. If you want your business to have a banner year, great copy is the X factor. Go to speakeasysalescopy.com today. Speaking of Coach Woodson, Michael wants to know, have you watched any game highlights of your coaches? And if so, who would be the most difficult matchup in their prime for you one-on-one? I've watched all the coaches that played. I've seen like the the film that I can get my hands on. I've, I've watched it. And I think, I mean, I think Coach Wilson would be a pretty tough matchup because he, like, he, he he was just aggressive, like, and he knew how to score. He was a smart player, and yeah. he he was scoring like forty some points, thirty some points, all without a three point line. So it's like he 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 knows how to you know pick his spots, and you know obviously I, I watched his some of his games from here and then in the NBA, and he could like he could really shoot the ball. So and me and him like. I go in his office and we talk trash about that all the time. Just like you know, <laughs> really he, he he brings it up to not even just me, like everybody. Like he was, like, I wish I could still play. Like, like I like I, I give you business. Like, so and he he, he like he he be serious, like he's not joking, just because like he he was uh, more than a respectable basketball player. So I feel like he 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 would be a tough matchup. He'd definitely be tough. But but I, I told him, I said, I said, you you be a tough matchup for me, but I'm coming right back at you. Like it's not like you know it's gonna be a one side of the face. You feel me? It's good. I mean, we, it's gonna be a battle. You feel me? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a dog fight. Absolutely. That's uh. So can he still shoot it a little bit? I mean, obviously physically he doesn't have his speed yeah. or, or his moves or anything, but can he still stroke it a bit? Yeah, he, he can't still shoot it when it when it's when you know when his back and his knees are feeling good. He'll he'll get some lift. He'll get off the ground. Yeah, um, jump shot. But yeah, he can still shoot it. He, he gets he gets his shots up in practice. See, that relationship between you and him is is interesting to me because of all the players on the current roster, like your game probably profiles the most to his, like the way that you score and, you know, the different things that you can do on the court. Obviously, you have a three point shot, which he didn't have. And you mentioned, you know, one thing with with certain guys who were just elite, elite scores like Mike Woodson was, I mean, he's one of the best scorers in the history of the Big Ten. Is sometimes they can do it, but it's not always easy for them to, you know, kind of relay what they did to right. a player. He's obviously been successful as a coach, so he can do that. Has he kind of taught? What have you picked up from him as a score? Like moves, things to look for. Is there anything specific that he's kind of shown you that you know when you get out there on the court, you know, is going to help you just get buckets? Yeah, I mean, the main thing, like, just in terms of offense, is you know, you you got to be an actor. You know, you got to be able to make somebody like think you're doing something else, even though, you know, 
coming across half court. Like, you know exactly where you about to go. So, you know, make your defender think you you going one way, you come off a screen the other way. And then just like being patient and, and, and timing is like probably the most important thing, just like timing and spacing. But, you know, but for me and like just like some stuff like that he's like told me, I mean, it's just like, you know, you, you got you got to be an actor. Like you got to be able to, you know, like you got to trick the defense because it's like no matter what the defense does, like they're always wrong. Like you it's just about how you read it. Like they're, the defense, is all, they can't be right all the time because it's like like it, or like it, it's just hard. Like it's just like if you make the right reads, like they're wrong in some way. But, you know, just just having really good timing and, you know, being patient. You know, that, that those those are things that kind of apply to, you know, everything like on the offensive end and then just having fun, really. Like he writes on the board like before every game. So like, you know, just like just having fun, being loose, like not. You yeah. Know, not, not, not playing, like looking over your shoulder or anything. Could Coach Fife have checked you in his heyday without fouling and cheap shots? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, he he was a defensive player of the year, so like I, he was. I'm sure he, you know, he would have been able to, you know, do something. But I, I, I would have, I feel like I would have watched enough film to figure him out as a defender. And you know, he, he kind of tells us like he, he would definitely like trash talk, and the guys that wouldn't <laughs> respond to him were the guys that were probably like you know like the the pros or like just like the better players and i'm i'm just like yeah i i, I can see it just cuz like just cuz just the type of person he is like he he's a competitor but yeah. i'm like yeah, I, I wouldn't have fed into that you know i would have just been coming to handle business but he you know be, being a good defender he he's going to win some of the like the possessions and and i'll win some you know i'm just going to try to win more yep so on that note, Elbows In wants to know who is one player on the team right now that you can't beat one on one yet, but you know it's coming. Um, I think I've I've gotten everybody. It, like like when we play like like if we play like King of the Court or something like it, it's never been somebody that just like that I've never beaten one on one. Like I don't think me and Trace have like played like a one on one game or like race or. Like, cause like it's usually just like me and like the rest of the guards. Like we've all like beaten each other. So I mean, yeah. I, I don't king, know. King, okay, king of the court. Describe that. I mean, it's just like we'll, we'll play three dribbles. It'd be like four or five of us, and like you know, if you score, you stay on. Next defender come on. So it's like, and we'll go to like seven baskets. Like no matter if it's a two or a three, we we'll go to like seven. Yeah. But we'll, we'll just play one on one, three dribbles. But like, it's not like. I haven't like I've I've won like against like you know, you've gotten everybody. Yeah. Like in terms of like the guards, like like we've all like beating each other. Like it's like so it's not yeah, it's it's not anyone that I like just can't seem to beat in one on one. Who's the toughest guy to go against? Like when you see him guarding it, you're like, ah damn, I'm gonna really have to work hard here. Toughest guy to go against in practice. Um well. That, like definitely for starters, Rob. Like you, you've seen him like guard some yeah. of the best guards in the Big Ten. Like he's a he's a great defender. And then that's who I figured you'd say. Yeah, Rob, and then um, Aunt Lil. Like Aunt, he he he's just like he he kind of kind of trying to like take some of the things that Coach Fife would do. And I I told him just really. <laughs> I'm like, dog. I, I'm a, I'm gonna let you you know do all your little you know. All the gimmicks and all like all that. I'm, I I let you do all that, but I'm a uh, I'm gonna stay poised and <laughs> do what I do. Like I, I like I obviously I have a little fun with you. Like like we we talk. Like I'm smiling, but like I'm not gonna actually like like get angry or anything. But like Ant's a really good defender as well. Hey, you know what? Good for him. He's got to do what he's got to do. He may not be able to match up athletically for everybody that he's going up against. So if you gotta do some some Dane Fife stuff to compete, you know whatever gets the job done, right? Yeah. Um, which and we talked about this in a previous episode, I think. But Nelson wants to know which of your teammates have been the most helpful in your adjustment to college basketball. One more time. Which of your teammates has been the most helpful in your adjustment to college basketball? Most helpful. Well, um, being a guard, you know, again, Rob, you know, just because like we either always on the same team or I'm guarding them, so or like we're guarding each other, so it's like. You know, we talking and he's like, 
you know, you know, telling me things that that he again like has seen like hundred hundreds of times. So, you know, he's he's made my um my adjustment a lot easier. You know, Rob X, P Stu, you know, really like the whole team, all the all the older guys really, just because like they've been in college basketball. So I'm 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 like fortunate to have those older guys who have the experience and a lot of games under their belt to be able to like teach me a lot of things on and off the court. Yeah. You know, and that's, I mean, that's so important for any freshman's development, you know, and then the other part of it is, you know, just getting out there playing games and adjusting to it, you know, and I want to ask you about that because one of the things that fans have talked a lot about, and I'm sure you've heard, this has not been a program that has shot the ball very well for the last (laughs) few years. And everybody's really excited about the potential for you guys to shoot it better this year, you know, with Parker and Miller. And a lot of people are penciling you in as a guy that, you know, may be able to come in and shoot 38, 39, 40% from three, you know, because of how good of a shooter you were in high school. My thought on that has always been, you know, I think you profile as a great shooter, but a lot of freshmen come in and struggle with the speed of the game. And a lot of times it shows up in their three point shooting, you know, and guys struggle kind of their freshman year, like Anthony Leal did a little bit last year uh, with his percentage and it gets better, you know, their sophomore, junior and senior year. How are you adjusting to the speed there? And do you foresee that, you know, kind of being something that'll take you a little while to get used to, especially when it comes to your outside shooting? Um, I mean, I feel like something that helps me a lot Cause I, I like, I've like, obviously like I realized the speed was a lot different, but something that helps me a lot is just always being down and ready. Like, like just always being ready to shoot or just make a play. Like, and that, and that's helped me a lot and slowed the game down because it's like, if I'm ready to shoot on the catch, like I can, you know, shoot my shot. And it's like, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to let, I'm gonna let it fly. So, you know, it, and, you know, obviously, like, if that was to happen, you know, like, a, like struggling with shooting, that's, like, part of, like, just the struggles of, like, basketball. Like, just, and, yeah. and, and that, that'll, that you know, show, like, like, then that's just a perfect opportunity to respond to adversity. And so, you know, that's not anything that, that I'm, like, too worried about just because, like, I'm, like, I mean, I'm, I'm getting the reps in, like, I'm getting – shots up so i'm like if it's not falling event you know eventually you know just like the it's like the law of averages like eventually like it, it I'm, I'm i'm gonna start making shots you know i don't i don't plan on you know coming to a game and just you know i'm you know i'm not even gonna finish that sentence because i'm not don't even want to <laughs> i don't even want to speak that into existence i like it no i like your mentality man you know shoot or shoot you know and you just got to have confidence and get the reps in how how does this staff handle shooting like is there a lot i mean obviously you guys are doing reps but is there a lot of work on mechanics because different staffs are different you know some think hey you know these guys got here shooting one way i don't want to mess them up especially this close to the season and other staffs you know really focus on mechanics and trying to tweak things here and there what has that been like you know for you since you've arrived in bloomington um i mean like for the the whole team like got that the coaches said they, they don't really like tweak guys shots but like again like they're big on like just us being like down and always ready to shoot and you know yeah. if somebody does get like some adjustments made to their jump shot it's like when it's just them and another coach in the gym like not like during practice like when it's just like a one-on-one type deal yeah so like, like they don't do that like in like in the middle of practice like just because like it's a lot easier to help somebody with their shot when it's just you and them the inside scoop is also supported by home field apparel the presenting sponsor of the back home network and our friends at home field apparel have been sponsoring shows on the assembly call now for five years which is crazy but we continue to enjoy working with them uh, because they're great to work with and because they produce an incredible product uh, that i don't know i wear home field stuff three four five times a week something like that especially when it gets cold out and i can pull my hoodies out And if you haven't seen, they did it again. They did a vintage refresh. You know, look, they've got more than 100 different schools on their website, but Indiana was their first. They still have more Indiana gear than anything else. And they've got another bison design. That first bison design, we all loved it. So many of us got the hoodie. Now they've got another bison design on a t-shirt. It looks great. They've got a shirt commemorating the 1987 National Championship all 
on the most comfortable material. It can be washed and it still maintains its softness, still maintains the great color of the printing. Our friends at Homefield Apparel, they study the history, the traditions, the legacies of the schools they work with, and they create thoughtful premium apparel. So whether you're looking for yourself, shopping for the Indiana fan in your life, or somebody else who maybe went to school at a different place, there's a good chance that Homefield Apparel has something that you're going to want to buy. And when you do that, use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, and get 15% off your first order. That's promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, for 15% off at homefieldapparel.com. Wear one for the team. Now back to the Inside Scoop. Dave wants to know what NBA players are your current favorites, and is there any certain player you pattern some of your game after? Obviously, everybody knows about your affinity for Kobe, um, so maybe speak a little bit about him and then any other current NBA players. Current NBA players? Yeah. Um, let me see. Ah, uh, let me see. Let me think. Because I guess a lot of guys, like a lot of my like favorite players are like like that they're not playing like anymore. So it's like current players. What do you think that is? I don't know. I mean, I think it's just like it, it were, there were a lot more guys who like I could like watch who like whose games were more similar to mine, like that played in the past. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I will say now, I mean, I, I like – like in terms of lefties, I like Kevin Porter Jr. Mm-hmm. You, I got got to tune in with James Harden, but mm-hmm. I like I like Trey Young. Like he, like not, and not not even just like his like his shooting, just like the way he plays and pick and rolls, and he's a brilliant passer. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I I pay a lot of attention to that, and my favorite player to watch is Steph Curry, without a doubt. Like that's my yeah. favorite. Like that's my favorite player to watch. Like he's like just because he's ridiculous. But um, like some like some past guys, I would say Manu Ginobili, um, Gilbert Arenas, Tony Parker, and um, somebody that I like try to model my game after a little bit is Katino Mobley. Like yeah. and just like he he was a he was a he was a lefty, and you know it, I, I've I literally watched like him doing a lot of the things that that I've done before just without thinking about it. So. You know, just paying closer attention to his game and, you know, other um, left-handed guards that have played, you know, that th- those are the guys that I particularly watch. Yeah. Valerie, uh, she wants the story on your nickname. Why Scoop? So when I was when I was younger, like probably almost before I turned one or when I did turn one, I, um, I was really greedy. I ate a lot and my mom knew of a DJ named Fat Man Scoop. And me and my brother, even to this day, we always watch the movie You Got Served. And Fat Man Scoop, he was a DJ. He did the the whole soundtrack for that movie. So I don't I don't know if that has any relation or if it had any relation when she gave me the nickname. But you know, it was just because I was like greedy and always eating. Obviously, like babies are always like pretty chunky. So like my whole family caught like my original nickname was Fat Man Scoop. Like it was the whole the whole nine but you know as i grew up you know obviously i'm not you know fat so um so the, the fat man faded away and it was just scoop fat, fat man just faded away and I'm, i've been scoop since i can remember yeah it's like when you were at school and they asked you what do you want to go by did you go by scoop or did you go by tomorrow my i i i went by tomorrow like it it would be like certain teachers that i would tell or like if they heard like some some of my other classmates calling me scoop like just that I, like teachers that i were comfortable with like i they they would call me scoop but most of the time like for the most part like my whole life in school like that that's where i mainly hear tomorrow like in school in school yeah so you know obviously a lot of these questions deal with basketball uh you know one of the people who submitted the question says what's one non-basketball thing that you want to get better at this year one non-basketball thing that i want to get better at um I, I, I want to read more books. Like I, I want to read more mm. things that aren't related to basketball, just things that I can, you know, that can help sharpen my mind, you know, just, you know, help with the, the mental part of the game. And like, just cause I guess a lot of things that I can read that have nothing to do with the game that 
prob that probably apply to it. So I've been trying to like find some things that I can read like like before games or like just like even when I'm like in my room. But so that that that's something that I want to like uh, take more part in this year. Like that's that's something I want to do. Like just to take up some more time and you know just inform myself. Like give, give myself a little bit more knowledge. Do you tend to prefer fiction or nonfiction for that kind of reading? Uh, nonfiction, like, but, yeah. but I, I, I've read some um, some fiction books. Hmm. Any anything up next on your reading list that you're looking to dive into? It's some book that's um, I I, I think it's by Tim Grover, hmm. but he's I, a trainer, I, right? That yeah, Tim he, Grover, the he, trainer. Yeah, he was um, he was Michael Jordan's trainer, but I yeah. um. I've been seeing his book and it and like my um Isaac, he one of our GAs, he sent it to me. Like he sent me a picture of it because he has it. I think he's reading it right now. Yeah. That, that's probably what I'll read next. All right. A couple more questions for you. I know you got to get back over to Cook Hall here soon. Um, you know, we've talked in, in a previous episode about the impact that the year at IMG had on you. Um, you know, and so Rob, you know, asked about that, but also said, what's the flip side? You know, IMG obviously prepared you for a lot, but what has surprised you the most or required the biggest adjustment about either the game at the college level or just life now as a college student? Um, well, answering I, questions I from crazy fans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess you could say, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, like the fans, like, because there's a lot more people at, Indiana than it was at IMG and just like mostly everyone there was like a, a student athlete so it's like I'm I'm meeting yeah. more people who are just here for school like mm -hmm. they, I've met some like some very interesting people and like you know people that I probably um have some relationships for with for the rest of my life so I would say that and then on the basketball side I would just say like the the practice being a little bit longer because we like we weren't practicing for three hours or two, like two and a half at IMG. Like, and we practice like um, in the morning, like early in the mornings too. So I, I would say those two things are where we're like the biggest adjustment. How much have you, I mean, I know you're a student of the history of the game. And so you're aware of Bob Knight and, you know, kind of what his reputation was like as a coach. How does what you know of Bob Knight's reputation as a coach match with what you see from Mike Woodson? as a coach? Because obviously Coach Knight was one of the biggest influences on Coach Woodson. Right. I mean, I mean, Coach Woodson, like he, he, like he'll say it, like, you know, Coach Knight taught him everything he knows or almost like, yeah, he, he built the foundation. So it's like a lot of the things that he does in terms of like teaching and like, you know, his passion for the game, you know, it, it, it comes from Coach Knight and, you know, we, we just, you, we can see like just the passion and, you know, his love for the game and, like he he walk in the gym and just being in there, like he he just lights up, like he just get a smile on his face, just because he has so many memories on that floor. And he is it. I'm just I'm sure it's just it's really special to him because we're about to make some of the, like the same or like just well, we're about to make memories together as he did with his teammates when he was here playing. So you know I I mean I, I don't really like know like too much about how coach Knight was coaching but just like in terms of you know how coach Wilson carries himself and you know just his his love for for people and like just our little family like you know I could tell you know he that um coach Knight had a um, very uh, big influence on that yeah all right last question for you this comes from Kathy you know I know you're taking it game by game but are there any games on the schedule that you've kind of circled or that you're especially excited to uh to get to and to play in um not i mean not not really like i like my focus is literally on um eastern michigan like that's you know what what i'm mainly focused on right now and you know as the team is and so the games that are circled are whichever one is coming up next that's that's the most important one then you know that's what we got to take care of but i mean other than that i mean i couldn't help but ignore the game that we have on my nana's birthday january 23rd uh it's, it's at home so that that's one that that'd be really important to me just because like i wear is that purdue or michigan 
that's Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. So like that, that, that's one that, you know, stood out to me immediately because, you know, it's, it's at home, you know, my family be here, it's on her birthday and, you know, I'm, I wear 53, you know, in honor of her. So that, that's one that, that'd be really important to me. But like, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm me and the team, you know, we're going to take a game by game. Yeah. You think you'll have trouble sleeping uh, Monday night with the game coming on Tuesday or do you, does it not affect you like that? I, I mean, hopefully I, my, my, you know, my adrenaline isn't pumping too much, you know, cause I, I got to get some sleep to, to just to be effective. So you know, I, I'll do what I need to do to make sure I get some rest. It's awesome. Well, tomorrow we can't wait to see you out there. Your first game Tuesday against Eastern, Eastern Michigan. Appreciate your time uh, answering these questions and we'll be back soon with another edition of the inside scoop. We got to get your dad on here. He's got to defend sure. himself from the, uh, from the trash talk from last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I talked to him. See when, uh, see when he's available. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, tomorrow. Good luck on Tuesday night. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. And that will do it for episode number three of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. My thanks to Tamar, as always, for making the time to answer all of our questions. Uh, our thanks to Speakeasy Sales Copy, the presenting sponsor for the Inside Scoop. Go to speakeasysalescopy.com. Get your free copy of Clay's Right to Sell Secrets. Uh, our thanks to Home Field Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. Use that promo code HOME to get 15% off your first purchase. My thanks to Bob Thompson for doing the music that you hear on the show. And my thanks to you for being here. The season starts on Tuesday against Eastern Michigan. We will, of course, have our post-game show immediately following the game. Come check us out after every IU game on Thursday nights for Assembly Call Radio. We will see you then. Keep your elbows in and your eyes on the rim. And go Hoosiers. Thank you.